Welcome to the Great Basin Seasonal Outlook for June through September. As of the end of May, we continue to have smaller fires popping up around the Great Basin, most of which staying small, which is normal for the time of year. We've also had a few recent larger fires develop in parts of Idaho in the lower elevations that have exceeded 1,000 or 2,000 acres. So far, we are still at PL1 in the Great Basin, and we are expecting these smaller fires to continue popping up and gradually grow larger in size throughout the month. Although we do have some moisture moving into northern and eastern areas, which will temporarily minimize fire danger. Over the last week, here on the left, you can see any precipitation has been pretty spotty across the Great Basin, with the exception of small parts of central Idaho. Over the last two weeks, this precipitation has averaged out to generally below normal in most areas, with the exception of earlier in the two-week period, a little bit of above normal precipitation here in eastern Idaho into Wyoming. Otherwise, some significantly drier areas continue to be parts of Utah, the Arizona Strip, and southern and western Nevada. Throughout the month of May, temperatures have averaged above normal in most areas, although we continue to have had low pressure troughs move through the region, so we see more significant swings in temperatures from well above normal to even record setting towards the end of the month to near normal or even just below normal as these areas of low pressure move through. Precipitation, we did have some significant precipitation over southern areas earlier in the month of May, which brought those areas to above normal for the 30-day period, but otherwise below normal across the region. Since the beginning of the water year, October 1st, 2024, you can see we've seen below normal or well below normal precipitation, especially as you go further south in the Great Basin. The only areas that have seen near or even just above normal precipitation were over far northwest Nevada into western Idaho. This plays into our drought development as we have continued to see drought develop and intensify over the southern half of the region, where we are currently seeing severe to extreme drought over much of the southern half of the Great Basin and even small sections of exceptional drought in the far south. Further north, we've had some drier areas of the Salmon Chalice in central Idaho into parts of eastern Idaho and western Wyoming, where we are seeing areas of moderate drought. But otherwise, a no drought has developed and none is expected to develop over parts of western Idaho into northern Nevada. And you can see from the drought outlook on the right, the current drought areas we see are likely to continue or intensify, especially in southern areas, and we may see the drought develop a little further in central Idaho. The flash drought uh, really over the last couple weeks has only shown that drying in the southern areas. And looking at how drought impacts our fire seasons, this, this drought time series is for the state of Nevada, but it's really representative of the low elevations of the Great Basin that are predominantly dependent on fine fuel growth. You can easily pick out our periods of more significant drought that usually last three, four, or even five years. And then we have shorter periods of either no drought or minimal drought. And you can see the areas where the black boxes fall in these areas where we have minimal drought or we are entering drought, and those are years we see well above normal median or normal or average acres. And again, this is because we have more moisture, we have more fine field growth, usually carryover when we see multiple years of no drought, and that really aids in our large fire spread across lower elevations. You can see where we are here on the far right, entering drought again after a period of a year or year and a half where we had minimal drought. So again, this really sets us up for a period that raises our concern to those low elevation, fine fuel areas that are above average with loading that will likely see larger fires grow in size. Looking at our snowpack, we've had some recent warm and dry conditions. So a big change from late March when we saw the peak of our snowpack where we did see some areas of above normal snowpack over parts of Nevada into Idaho with still below normal snowpack in the far south. And again, this was the peak we did have some recent storms in March that brought that snowpack that was really very bleak through much of the season up a little bit higher in the far south. But you can see the snowpack is really melting very rapidly and we'll continue to see that snow melt off here in the next few weeks. Looking at our current fuel conditions, uh, we do have carryover fuels that are coming into play already early this season from last year. These maps were experimental uh, fine fuel loading and continuity maps. The map on the left shows the fine fuel loading. Anything in green or blue would be above normal fine fuel loading going into last year's fire season. So you can see the areas that we were looking at were northern Nevada and southern Idaho. We also had higher continuity in parts of western Nevada and northwest Nevada and even western Utah, although the loading really didn't amount to anything above normal 
we still had quite a bit of continuity. So we did not see a lot of lower elevation snowpack in these areas for the most part to compact these fuels. So we are expecting plenty of carryover going into this fire season. This is another experimental rangeland fire probability map. And this is for this year of 2025, taking into account our carryover and our new fine fuel growth. So areas of concern that would have a higher probability of large fires over a thousand acres would be anywhere over northern Nevada, even parts of western and northwest Nevada, and then across southern Idaho, and even to a lesser extent, parts of northern Utah. So looking at some of our current fuel moistures, our 10-hour fuel moistures have been very low down over southern areas that we've seen this recent hot and dry period, certainly much higher as you get up into Idaho and Wyoming and even northern Utah. 100-hour fuel moisture shows that same trend with the lowest conditions across Nevada and Utah and the Arizona Strip. And then 1,000-hour fuel moistures are only the lowest in the far south. Looking at some of our 100-hour moisture, fuel moisture fuel charts across the Great Basin, just showing where we are in relation to normal. You can see over western Idaho, which also stretches into northwest and western Nevada, our 100-hour fuel moistures are near record lows for the time of year. Where we haven't crossed these lower critical thresholds yet, again, we are much drier than what we would normally see this time of year. And our grasses are also curing in these areas as well. These are also areas that do have above normal fine fuel loading or continuity to help aid that fire spread. So we'll likely see these are these will be the hot spots for some larger fires to start developing in June as we continue to dry out even after um, early June moisture. So we'll continue to see probably our larger fires popping up in these areas. 100 hour fuel moisture over the eastern and southern side of the Great Basin. Again, we're near record lows for the time of year, but you can see from the green forecast line the 100-hour ER, fuel moisture really spikes up as we get this moisture during the first week of June. So looking at everything as we put it all together, now looking at the forecast, through the first week in June, we do have a couple of low-pressure systems moving through the region, which will bring us some moisture over the eastern two-thirds of the region, more significantly across Utah and parts of Wyoming. But you can see the dry spots still western, southwest Idaho into western and northwest Nevada. The 8 to 14 day outlook taking us through mid-June shows a return to warm and dry conditions in most areas. And then looking at June as a whole through the month, showing a warmer and drier signature. But we still do have some low pressure troughs that look to move through the region even during the middle of the month and even towards the end of the month potentially. So we'll see how this plays out. We could see maybe some better chances of moisture or cooler temperatures depending on these troughs of low pressure. Looking at the three-month outlook, taking us from July through September, still a more of a drier trend over northern areas that seems to be pretty consistent in the long-term models and then these warmer temperatures. The moisture in the south, we've seen a lot of moisture down in the southwest at times over the last month or so, which will continue into June, which is certainly abnormal for this time of year, but it has not been associated with the monsoon, just more of these specific troughs coming in, and that will continue going through early to mid-June. So we'll see um, if the monsoon is a little bit delayed this year, which is looking more and more likely because we really need a strong ridge of high pressure dominating the Four Corners area before we see that true monsoon moisture move north. And right now that's not looking like that's going to develop any time, at least through the middle of the month, if not further. So we'll watch that, but we could still see this above normal moisture more, again, associated with Pacific lows as opposed to monsoon moisture. But right now it's looking like northern areas of the Great Basin will be on the dry side. So putting everything together, our outlook for June, our concerns are in the south, in the higher elevations due to the drought we have going on down there. Not really a fine fuel issue down in the south as we haven't had any really new growth this year with the very dry conditions we've seen over the last six to nine months. Over western Nevada, we are expecting the potential of above normal fire potential in June. Again, these areas are already showing critical live fuel moistures in some of our sagebrush and our grasses are drying out rapidly. So with this area missing the moisture in early June, we should just continue to become a little bit more critical with each passing day in the West, even with cooler temperatures moving in. Up North, our fuels have been a little bit um, on the dry side, certainly in Idaho with some of those larger 1,000 and 2,000 acre fires popping up, but we will see some moisture moving in across the North. So that may moderate some of that fire danger going through the first half of the month. But by July or even end of June, as that we're likely to see that fire potential start increasing in Idaho, 
We'll see a larger area where fine fuel is going to be our main concern with fire potential and fire spread. We also have an area developing probably towards mid-July in the Salmon Chalice area. Again, this area had less snowpack than the rest of central Idaho, so may get started with above normal fire potential a little bit earlier. And then with a potential delay of monsoon moisture in the south, we are holding on to this above normal fire potential in the south, at least through the first half in July. Then by August, the main focus shifts to western and northern areas, both a combination of mountain areas that are potentially going to see this warm, dry period critically dry out fuels quickly in the mountains, and then also the fine fuel concerns anywhere from Idaho down into northern and western Nevada. This is likely to continue into September at this point. We are not seeing any significant shifts in a wetter, cooler pattern in September is typically when we start to see our dry cold fronts move in. So with the grass concerns of this area still could be pretty active going into September. Here's a quick look at the national outlook. Uh, we do have definitely above normal fire potential in Canada, which is not indicated on this map. They've been starting to get active already here heading into June. So that will be a concern with some resources from our area as well. But looking at the areas around the Great Basin, uh, the southwest may start picking up later in June after this moisture moves through. And then California, the Pacific Northwest, uh, gradually start picking up in fire potential. As we go into July, most of our neighbors to the north and west are expecting above normal fire potential. So that'll be a concern for resources, certainly going through the fire season. And then still some active areas of Minnesota down into Texas and, and oh, Texas and Oklahoma. And a very similar pattern for August. Uh, by September, we'll start to see the plains quiet down, but still very active across much of the northern and western tier of the U.S. So that concludes the seasonal outlook for this month. Check back next month for the latest updates.